the Great Wall of Los Angeles. Like what first comes to mind, it's not actually an ancient castle style defense wall stretching miles on mile. It's actually a half mile mural listed on the National Register of Historic Places, running along the Tahunga Wash located in front of Grant High School in Oxner and Coldwater Canyon in North Hollywood, California, or now Valley Village as the city has tried to split North Hollywood in half. It happens to depict California and U.S. history in an awful representation of human rights and its growth up to the 1950s. And I'm here to tell you how it was done and about the meaning of the art itself. Backstories, ladies and gentlemen. The Great Wall was an art project started by Judy Baca in 1975, where she got around 400 inner city youths to gather and work up to 25 hours a week to paint a half mile long mural along the stretch of the Tahunga Wash in North Hollywood. There was of course help from professional artists who helped the young people with techniques, highlighting, shading, and tricolor bending because it's not easy no matter how good of an artist you are to lay that blueprint on a wall. Baca also wanted to make sure the youths understood the history of what they were going to paint so historians and scholars met with them throughout the painting process. There was also a few setbacks of course because the location is an active wash Further out, it even connects to the LA River, so the wash did get flooded multiple times, where one flood actually derailed the project so bad it washed away much needed materials, including scaffolding, where they would have to gather extra donations to continue and finish the project. The wall would finally be complete after nearly nine years of work in 1984, and it covered 2,754 feet and is also one of the largest murals in the world. So what about the meaning of the actual art? Starting from the top before people existed in California was inhabited by predators and we mostly know this because of the La Brea tar pits where lots of fossils have been preserved. The first sign of people in California, however, was around 1000 BC and they were the Chumash Indians. They lived around the Southern Californian coast off the rich resources the land provided and did it for centuries until the arrival of the Spanish in 1542 where Spain claimed California but didn't return back to the Protola expedition in 1769 with the purpose of Christianizing the natives and making a Spanish colony. They would do this by making numerous missions along the Californian coast and eventually the Mexican people would then seize the land and control these missions throughout the 1800s and they also founded the city of Los Angeles as a farming community in 1781 along with some African descent indigenous natives. So yeah, Halei was founded by native Mexican and black people, which is something you won't hear in history class. Then came the Mexican-American War in 1846 to 1848 which was the first armed U.S. war technically fought on foreign soil, where U.S. President James K. Polk believed the U.S. had a manifest destiny to expand across to the Pacific Ocean. And once the smoke cleared, Mexico lost California, along with Utah, Nevada, Arizona, and New Mexico to the United States, where the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed, establishing the Rio Grande as the U.S.-Mexican border in 1848. Then, of course, the gold rush came right after that spawned from the Sutter's Mill, which brought in an estimated 300,000 people to California. And California officially became a U.S. state in 1850. There was a few successful civil rights leaders at the time. And they led a migration from the South because California was considered a free state. But as soon as they got there, it wasn't that friendly. Nevertheless, they would establish communities in San Francisco and Los Angeles. And California was really the epicenter of the Wild West, which was led by Robin Hood bandits such as Yo Queen Marietta. Immigrants would also come from around the other parts of the world, like China, who had to pay a big tax to live and mine in California, which forced a lot of Chinese into cheap labor to build roads and railroads, which many were taken advantage of and killed, like what happened in the Chinese Massacre of 1871 in Los Angeles where a mob of murderous racists came into the Chinese community and just killed them. And of course, the racist justice system was defective in stopping any of this, as well as bringing the perps to justice. Because all the convictions were overturned, and again, you probably won't hear about any of this in history class. 
The wall then follows into the turn of the century with women's rights, trolleys, cars, and Hollywood starting film production, as well as the development of San Pedro Port, which is also known as the Port of Los Angeles, which is the fifth busiest port facility in the world, and it will lead to a migration of immigrants to LA from around the whole world. Then come the World War I depictions and how women help bury their dead husbands. Amongst that, there is also a large Thomas Edison piece displayed since he was the Elon Musk at the time. And he's a controversial figure now because many claim he stole their ideas, which is also kind of like Musk. And as we go along, we see the advancement of Hollywood, and then it goes into the Great Depression, how Prohibition sparked the music scene, such as the Dunbar Hotel, which was the center of the jazz scene in LA. And around the same time, we got the Long Beach Killer Quake in 1933 displayed because of all the damages, which we actually just touched on in the LA City of Oil episode. The Depression also led to the mass deportation of Mexican Americans, around 1.8 million of them, in an effort to reserve jobs for the white citizens, of course. It also shows how the white citizens put all the Japanese immigrants in the concentration camps during World War II. The Second World War also led to the development of the women's workforce, and I'm sure everyone's seen the Rosie the Riveter flexing posters. Civil rights movements would start shortly after, as black people who fought in the war were forgotten, and people like Dr. Charles Drew, who helped tremendously in the medical field, weren't celebrated or given proper rights back home. Followed by Jewish refugees after the war and the birth of the baby boomers, which sparked suburbia. Then comes McCarthyism with the Cold War, which was fear-mongering of communism and canceling those who were randomly accused of it. Which, ironically, today we are now doing the opposite under the current administration and canceling those speaking of democracy. Then they have the Chavez Ravine, which was when the city of LA removed Mexican residents from their homes, even forcefully if they didn't sell their homes so they could basically build public housing, but ended up making it to Dodger Stadium. They also throw in the Mattachine Society, which is the start of the gay rights movement, because at the time it was considered a mental disorder to be homosexual. It also shows that the Jewish and Asian Americans were given their rights and reparations, then the advancement of American athletics, and this is where the wall ends. Baca has said that they made all this at the right time because, quote, public art in America has taken a shift that's basically becoming decorative. They've reduced the community process to censorship. The Great Wall, for example, could not be done today, end quote. And even though she said that in the year 2000, it rings even more true today with what's going on with the deterioration of the First Amendment and government agendas being forcefully pushed. Censorship is at an all-time high in the technology age. And God forbid you speak or display something not in the current administration's narrative, especially here on YouTube. Now all these events are worth looking more into on your own if you're interested in the details because it will be a whole documentary series just to cover each one and there's a lot more than just meets the eye of the art displayed. Also, productions of the 60s and 70s is actually in talks, but so far nothing has been painted other than the rejuvenations of the mural from floods, pollution, sun damage, and vandalism. However, the expansion should be done before the 2028 LA Olympics, as well as a new bridge since the original has long been taken down from deterioration. They also want to put lights on and light the art up at night and signs interpreting the art. And all this coming from a $5 million grant from the Andrew M. Melton Foundation. So it could actually be a pretty cool tour spot pretty soon. But there's nothing whitewashed about the history on this wall. Because a lot of U.S. history is racial driven. And America is by far the most racially challenged country to ever exist in my eyes. Even more so than Hitler's Germany because that was in centuries of discrimination and murder. Like the U.S. has been up to since the very beginning, and to this very day, we are still technically speaking. It's important we actually know the real history of the country and not the sugar-coated version our education system pushes to brainwash us with. So if you happen to be in the area and want to see some cool art, just come around the Half Mile Park on Coldwater sitting in between Oxnard and Burbank Boulevard. Backstories, ladies and gentlemen.